Hi, this is Winnie with Next Level Board Games, and today we're going to unbox Wonderland's War, a game by Ben and Tim Eisner, Ian Moss, Manny Trimbley, and published by Druid City Games and Skyboard Tabletop. So, let's find out what's inside. It's a pretty good sized box. It's also fairly heavy, and I'll show you the front again. It's a little hard to see the reflection of the plastic, but the cover, super colorful. And the back also, too, and this is pretty much what made me, the front actually is what made me buy this game. Uh, when I looked on the back, I also was kind of excited, but um, I hadn't actually seen this game, but it looks really interesting, and it looks like it will be fun and maybe have some, like, trick-taking type stuff. So let's see what's inside. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not going to work if I take the lid off the other way. Okay. So now that we have the right side up, let's see here. Oof. Okay. There's also a little um, imagery on the sides. Let's see if they're all different. Yep. Oh, that's cool. Different on each side. Very cool. Okay. So advertisements. The rule book is full size with the box. And it actually seems fairly big. I hope it's, um, yeah, lots of big pictures. So it's not like a ton of writing. I don't think it's supposed to be super, super complex. Um, but lots of pictures kind of describing what's going on. I as far as I know, this is slightly asymmetrical, so I suspect some of this is explaining, I'm guessing, is explaining how different factions operate. So anyway, there's the rule book. Looked like there was lots of clarifications at the end. That's kind of nice. And I'm probably going to need it to know what all these things even are, actually. Let me bring that back. Okay, let's see here. Lots of cards. Well, these are small little decks of cards. Like, well, that's oversized, but... You can see how small those are comparatively. Huh. Okay, let's see here. These might be faction cards. Oh, they're different colors. There must be more, because this is only three colors. Ooh, look at that green. Such a pretty green. Probably be easier to see when I take the plastic off. Let's see here. So I'm always disappointed when I open up a game and there's not a green player color. And also black, because we have one player who loves to play black color. And this game with its darkness, I would you would almost think that they would have the a black player. Black player cards and cubes. Oof, plastic. Okay, these all definitely seem like one player here. So the backs are the same, just different color. So now you can see, I'll show you. Let me open the blue so you can see all three. much plastic. Okay, so I'll just take like one of each of these. And then I notice there's different numbers on the back, so ones and twos and threes. So there's the colors of the cards, like really vibrant colors. The green's really bright. It's not super dark, but it's like a really bright green. I like it. The red's real pretty. The, dark, the blue is also very pretty. So neat colors. I don't know what these cards are used for. And actually, oh, I just noticed the whole stack is the same. So ones, twos, threes. Okay, so these are probably not player cards. Because this is all ones, this is all twos, this is all threes. So it's probably these are probably cards that everyone's going to use. Clearly, I have not played this game yet. I'm excited to learn it, though. And let's see what these cards are. Maybe these are faction cards? Let's see. Oh, reference cards. There's a lot of them, though. One, two... Oh, wait, they have different letters. Huh. Are there different... Oh, and B, A, C, A, B, Cs. Hmm, okay, not exactly sure how that works. These are all the same on the back. Tea Party cards, Wonderlandian and Ally cards, okay. And then there's also gonna be Wager cards, Quest cards. Okay, let's see here. Let's see here. Oh, here we go. Here were some of the other, oh, so cute. I love the art. Just hang on, let me take the plastic off. I think it's probably easier to see if I take plastic off, even though it's tedious. So, oh, they're different. Wow. So cool. Okay, so then they repeat. So these might be player decks, but that gives you an idea of what they look like. Hard to get that in my hand. So those are very cool. That one says quest cards. So there's going to be more of those. Oh, wager card. Oh, wager cards. There we go. Now they're similar. So these ones have all kinds of stuff. 
quest cards. So these are probably going to be like little side gigs, like little side adventures. Okay. And now, a whole bunch of pieces. Okay. Castle markers. Oh, wow. Those are cool. Okay. Should I try to show you a couple different colors of these? Ooh, purple. Okay, another color that I like. So, castle colors. Let's see if I can... So there's purple and green. I also see red at a minimum, and I think pink, my least favorite color, pink, um, and then blue, blue and red. So it's kind of hard to see like that, but those are the colors. Um, I could probably just put one like out here of each of these so you can see them. Okay. All right, and then, oh no, these fell out. What are these? Oh, I've never seen these. These are the same things that you play, you have in like a million different games, the little gems, except for they're gray. I don't think I've ever seen them gray. Madness shards, that is super cool. Okay, I have to say I like them in that color. We have a bunch of these in like Wildlands and you've seen these in Pandemic or, no, maybe not Pandemic, but a million different games. They're just the same, the same little shape, but they're usually always red and they're like gems. So these are, Madness shards. That's cool. Okay. Oh shoot, there's a whole bunch more. Okay. Pick those up later. Little sandy um, bottoms. So these are going to be your player tokens, the different color players, and I'm assuming these are going to match the different castles. It seems pretty obvious to me. Uh, this part I think I might actually have right. <laughs> so these are probably going to be like player, player colors. Oof. Don't want that. Okay. Faction discs. There's six of these, so there must be places on the board that you, they're just small little like round tokens that you're going to put like on the board somewhere to track stuff, I'm going to guess. And a shard die, which is the madness shards. Okay, must be related to that. One, twos, and threes. Wow, looks like one, three. Okay, there's those. And then meeples. Okay, so these are just Standard meeples, no black, unfortunately. My friend's gonna be very disappointed. But there's red, pink, ah, oh, interesting they had red and pink. Red, pink, green, blue, purple. So there's those that are gonna go for each player. And maybe each player gets these, one of these. Five player action bags, there you go. Okay, so there's five of these. They're just standard like cotton. They're not um, not not slick like the ones from the Quacks of Quellenbergs. They're like more like um, like a cotton, but still just fine. Oh, here's the other rest of the shards. Look how big these are. Let me grab one of those. Of course, I got all the ones that have fallen. <laughs> to show you how humongous these are, just so you can see. So there's one compared to like five. <laughs> um, it's like six times bigger than those little ones. So those are cool. I don't think I've ever seen them that big, even though if you've played Lost Runes Arnak, the red uh, gems in there are quite a bit bigger than all the other ones. But this is like literally humongous. So that's really cool. Some extra bags and then let's see what's under here. Here we go. It's like a perfect fit there. Would not give it up. Okay. So then, oh, I never opened the rest of the cards. I didn't even notice that. There's an A and an M. Wonderlandian. Oh, it's got to be a W. Wonderlandian and ally cards. Okay, so A for allies, W for Wonderlandian. I'll get it. Okay. So then, and then there's some more of the player aids. It looks like, those look like player aids to me. So, a bunch of different art on the cards. Like a little bit of writing, but then like a lot of art, which is nice. These are cute. They look just fun and, you know, um, involved and thought out. They're not just like simple and repeated. A couple repeats here. So funny. So much personality in these cards, right? Okay, let's see here. What's this? Okay, so I think these are probably the player boards. Five player faction boards. Okay, so here we go. Here's the colors. So that's probably the pink. Here's green. Let's see if you get it. So here's green and pink and red let's see here these are thicker than i mean they bend but they're thicker than you think i wonder if they're the same 
two player. Oh, weird. So one says two player, and then one doesn't say. So I don't know if that means uh, anything other than two player, or maybe it's two players or more. Oh wait, it's, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, here's uh, what would probably be purple, and then yellow, but there's no yellow, so maybe blue. <laughs> I'm not, oh yeah, it must be blue. Blue meeples. Okay. Anyway, so that's what the player boards look like. I want to make sure they sit flat. Then, what is this? Raging War. I don't know if this is like solo or, oh, quick, roll a quick reference. Oh my gosh, that is cool. Okay, there's a lot on here, so, but it might keep you from flipping back and forth in the book so many times. Sometimes this happens to us where we, we're learning a game and we read the rules and then we're flipping back and forth in this so many times that by the time we get done with one game, the staples are already starting to come through and I'm like, oops. Okay, so then a whole bunch of tokens. Ah, oh, this is such a tight fit in here. Let's see here. Oh, they had a little, if I had seen it right away, but white on white, I could not see it. Okay, I think that's it. Pull this out. So here's a bunch of the... A bunch of the standees. Oops. And clearly they come out easily. There's a unicorn. Look at that. That's cool. All kinds of stuff, like Sword in the Stone. Okay. Here's some of the players, right? You recognize them from the cards. Cheshire Cat. And, wow, cool. Okay. Okay, so there's that. Little pop things that pop out. Bunch of tokies. So all a whole bunch of roses and the different things. So. I'm not sure exactly where all these go, but anyway, there's a bunch of little tokens to pop out. It looks like little, um, these are probably some of the different quest things, like with the hammer and the teapot and different things, the timepiece. I'm not sure what all these are. These might just be, um, oh, these are probably for each player. These are for the different players, probably. Oops, I could easily be wrong. I'm merely guessing. Oh, I keep popping them out as I'm trying to move. <laughs> And let's see here. These are probably definitely tracking for somewhere. Different little things. I'm not sure what all these stand for, but 24 tools of the Wonderlandians chips. Okay, so these are a bunch of like tools and stuff. Then there's also some faction starting chips, like we thought, and then faction artifact chips. And then, oh, the sword in the zone is the starting, uh, the starting player standee. Okay, so the... The sword in the stone, I was wondering where that fit into the story, but that's the starting player token. Okay. So that's all those. A bunch of those. And then last but not least is the game board itself. So let's see here. It seems like it's fairly big. We'll see here. Oh yeah, it's definitely. Trying to be gentle with it. There we go. Okay. Oh my gosh, it's like a table. It's like an actual table. Ooh, not enough room. Okay, well, it's just gonna be what it is. You get the idea. I'll hold it up so it doesn't get tweaked. So, really colorful. I suspect um, some of the tokens we had earlier are gonna go over here. And then there's, um, I noticed some, there was these little three part things with like, almost like time or something on them. They're numbers. I'm not sure what they stand for, but here's one. And I see a spot right here. It looks like those probably go there. So those probably get randomly put out if I had to guess. I have no idea what they do. It just seems like they, it just naturally seems like they go there. So I don't know what they mean, but there's little spots all over for that here and here. I guess not all over, but different little places. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there's probably a place that um, each one of these probably is related to each one of the five factions. It just seems like that. Cool, what a cool, here's another little like battle track, another trucking tool. It shows the hammer tool, so I don't know how that works, but. And then something here has to do with the number of players you have. They had a table because there's four players, five players, so. Definitely different things that we're tracking in this game, I can tell. But I, I still don't think, it didn't look like it was going to be uber complex. So I'm actually excited that there's a decent amount of stuff going on, and I'm excited to learn how to play it. 
So that's everything that's in Wonderland's War. It's a very colorful board, as you can see. Sorry, there's so many things that didn't all fit on the table. Um, let me close that. That'll probably make it a lot easier. Um, so those are really colorful. The cards um, on the back, there's all kinds of different things. The, even the little uh, tea party cards are super bright colors. My favorite one, of course, is the green. Just really pretty, also green on the back. Um, bunch, of, bunch of other cards, castles, there's lots of um, player token stuff, right? Like every player has like a cube, they have like castles, they have discs, they have meeples. Even though I don't think it's supposed to be uber complex, but I think there's some definitely some different things going on. Um, the player boards are also super cool. Like here's one, and you can just see the colors and that there's like, a, you know, I think a decent amount of things going on. Like enough meat to this game to really keep people paying attention and excited to to learn it and to figure out uh, how exactly it works and hopefully have some fun with it. So if you, I'm not necessarily like the biggest fan of Alice in Wonderland, but I did also back the Paint the Roses game, which we love and it's I think very different than how this game plays. But I also like, um, I love that game. I also like the darkness of this game. And I think that there's probably some uh, maybe sabotage or trickery that you play with other players, which is sometimes fun too, depending upon who you play with, of course. <laughs> anyway, that's everything that's in Wonderland's War. Thanks for watching Next Level Board Games.